Hello and welcome to the Think Sports podcast. Today we have a very special episode for you guys. Our guest uh, today is Jaydeep Mukherjee. He is a legend of Indian tennis. Uh, we are extremely proud to welcome him to our podcast today. Hi guys, how are you? And that's been great talking to you, Think Sport. I'm in Calcutta, middle of election fever. So it's nice to be with you guys and have a talk. Tell me what's happening. Hi, sir. Lovely to have you over here um, on our Think Sports podcast. Uh, just to start off with, to begin with, we'd all love to know uh, your inspiration into the world of tennis and how you got into tennis, and um, where and how you started your tennis journey. Well, uh, my tennis was by accident. In fact, you know, I was always a good sportsman, and let's play. In school, all sorts of games like tennis, uh, football, rugby, cricket, hockey. So what really happened was one once I was when I was eleven years old or ten years old, we had a car accident. And I just looked at my left shoulder. That was summertime, around April, May. That time when I was twelve, ten, eight, sorry, ten years old. So I had doctors said you can't play football or rugby. That's in the monsoon. So my father used to play. Tennis at the South Club, so he dragged me there. So I reluctantly went there because I was not that keen on tennis. I was keen on like all youngsters those days, keen on soccer and uh, hockey, etc. But I went to the South Club in the summer and I started playing, and I was pretty good as a ten-year-old. Then there was a coaching scheme organized by the government of India, it's called the Raj Kumari Amrit Kaur Coaching Scheme, where I joined, and uh, our coach was famous. Indian tennis champion in those days, Mr. Dilip Bose, who was Asian champion. He coached me, and that's how from one to another I took off, took off, and I went on to be a good player. Played junior tournaments, then I won under 13 nationals, then I won under 18 nationals, then I was sent to Wimbledon, junior Wimbledon, and Wimbledon, and that's that's how it, I started. But then I got involved with tennis, and I, I when I look back. I feel it's great that good I played tennis because tennis has brought me a lot of happiness, joy, made me travel, made a lot of good friends all around the world. It's amazing. It has been an amazing trip. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's it's wonderful, fascinating to talk about how it's by accident that you got into tennis. And then you started off your professional career. You were on the big stage at a very early age. I remember at about 20, 21 years old, you played the Australian Open in about 1962, 1963. And um, the, the biggest memory uh, for most of us, uh, per se, is the 1966 uh, Davis Cup. Right? Uh, India reached the final of the Davis Cup in 1966. So for you being an integral part of this team, um, what are your memories, your thoughts uh, during the tournament, the experience as a whole? Well, I started uh, professional tennis. Or, I mean, there, those days was amateur tennis, whatever it was, age of 17. I, First year I went to Wimbledon, I qualified for the men's event. And I, um, after that, I didn't have to qualify. So you can say in 17, 18, I played men's Wimbledon for 14 years continuously from uh, 59 to 74. And uh, then I got in the circuit. Once you get a little better, you meet rough shoulders with the top guys, you get more confidence. And that happened to me. And we, then we were sent for training to Australia under. Harry Hoffman, Prabhjit Lal, and myself, and 62, and we did really well. And in fact, I did really well there. We set two semi-finals with other players, with Labour and Emerson being there. So then, the Davis Cup was another story. The Davis Cup, uh, my my uh, intro, intro to Davis Cup was also a very, uh, it's a story which you should hear about. I was playing a tournament in Pakistan. And all of a sudden, I got a so as to go to Bangkok for the Davis Cup against Thailand. The Indian team at that time consisted of Prindit Lal, uh, Ramanathan Krishna, and Naresh Kumar was the playing captain. Unfortunately, Prindit got suspended for some reason, or whatever, I don't know. Krishna got contradicted chicken pox in Bangkok. 
So I reached Bangkok from Pakistan to Bangkok on Thursday at four o'clock in the afternoon. I went to the hotel to meet Ramanath Krishnan. So Anish Kumar said, no, don't go in the room, it's got chicken pox and you're playing tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So I had no practice, no, played the first match at 10 o'clock next morning and one in five sets. So that was, uh, that, that was my debut in Davis Cup, the five sets, my first match which I won. And fortunately, I, I have a very good record in Davis Cup in five set matches. I won a lot of matches. And I was known to be a very good uh, Davis Cup. <laughs> And then uh, coming back, those days India was the best team in Asia. We always beat Japan. We always played in uh, the zonal finals or semi finals. You see, the Davis Cup format has changed. Right now, you have the Davis Cup when you have 16 top players in one group and they play a couple of weeks. In our days, it was zonal Asian zone, uh, American zone, South American zone, European zone, African zone. So each zone, Winners used to play against each other. And finally, the, whoever got through played the, played the challenge round. Challenge round was the, the Davis Cup final. Whoever won the Davis Cup did not have to play any other matches. They had to just wait, wait for the challenger. Challenger was from one of these countries who got through. So we reached the challenge round in 66, like you just said. 65, we should have reached. We are very close. We lost to Mexico in Chennai. So we knew that we had a very good chance in 66 to do well. That's a, another story, it was a long story. I have very happy memories because we had a tough draw. We beat Japan in Japan. We came back to India and in, uh, then we beat West Germany in Delhi in November. Uh, then we beat Brazil in Calcutta in December. And then we went to Australia and lost to Australia 4-1. The Australian team was all all Wimbledon champions. There was Roy Emerson, Fred Stolley, John Nimcom, Tony Rhodes, and I, ours is Krishna, friendly to myself, and SP Mistra. And their coach was Harry Hoffman, world famous coach, and our coach was Mr. R.K. Khanna, who was the president of the uh, secretary of the tennis association, who came for the ride. So it was a very good year for us. In fact, my last match. Uh, in Australia, I lost in five sets to Fred Stolley. And uh, Jack, those days, Jack Kramer had a troop, a professional group, and I was offered a contract to join them. But unfortunately, I, I already had a, started working in Tata with Tata Steel, and I couldn't leave that. So it was a memorable year, very good wins. I beat, uh, beat Bunga, to the, who was a Wimbledon finalist in uh, Delhi, which I think one of my best matches, amazing match. I just can't still forget the match. So um, we we were very interested in knowing about in a sport like tennis, the role of a captain. You talk about playing captains at the Davis Cup. You talk about captaining um, the team that goes. We wanted to know your opinions on the role of the captain in tennis. Well, the role of the captain is it is uh, like he's not playing captain or the not playing captain and the captain is. Uh, you have to really know the game very well first. You must know your players well. You have to make decision who to play with grass or clay. You have the choice of surface. You have to look after the PR of the team. You have to attend press conferences and uh, you know. Plus, you have to sit in the chair while they're playing and give advice to the players. Like when I was not playing captain, my team was consisted of Leander Pace and Mahesh Bhupati, and back the. Uh, I could say quite proudly that I'm the person who got them together to play the doubles together because Mahesh was really raw. He just came out of college from the US and he, I just wanted him to be in the team. And he did exceed, exceedingly well. Leander was already a, uh, on the way up. So they have joined hands and they said that's a different story. They want Wimbledon, they want everything. But uh, unfortunately, they could not carry on. But coming back to your uh, question, to your about Davis Cup, captain's role is very important. Maybe it's not as important as in the cricket field because cricket the captain is playing, but the non playing captain sitting in the chair and, and notice what your player is doing wrong. You must have a good knowledge of tennis, exactly tell the guys where to serve, how to come in, 
and, and discuss tactics with their players while changing while the change comes and before the match and after the match. So yeah, um, it's interesting because we over here in India, cricket is a huge sport as it is, and we are more accustomed to having um, uh, captains who are on the pitch. The concept of a non-playing captain and how significant it is, like you have touched upon, is uh, very vital. And um, as cricket is our primary sport here, but tennis, I believe, over the years has grown. And, and the interest has grown a lot more people are into tennis now so you being a former tennis player yourself having seen the evolution of tennis over so many years what is your take on the tennis scenario today um, as compared to maybe a few years ago or back in the day and um, whether you believe in the future tennis is heading in the right direction so that India can produce more talented players and we can reach Davis Cup uh, finals or Davis Cup in general again well, it's a very tough uh, question to answer, but I think uh, basically you need some good players to encourage youngsters to keep the game. And cricket, this is cricket history. IPL has encouraged youngsters to take up cricket in a real earnest. In tennis, also, when we reached the Davis Cup final, a lot of youngsters started playing the game and carried on. We were the best in Asia. After us, with the Amritsar brothers, they also they did their job. To do that, then give Leander the pace. Unfortunately, now the present situation is we have some very good players, the doubles players, but unfortunately, in singles, we don't have anyone in the top 50. The last person who cracked the 100 was from Dev Dev Barman, who was retired. So, you don't have a, you don't have a, uh, for, the, for the youth, you don't have a figure to look up to, an idol to look up to. It, I want to be like, so what the youngsters now is have. So much access to television, media, so they so you ask, they know Federer, they know Nadal, they know Djokovic, they want to, and the parents want to sort of think that sports is very easy. Tennis is an easy way out of the career. Let me tell you, it's the most difficult career in sports. One of these individual sport, only about 100 people in the whole world make that kind of money, professional. Secondly, the traveling for international tennis player is among us. You travel all over the world. One day you're playing in Japan, next day you're playing in Europe, then you're playing in South America. So that takes a lot of toll on your body and mental health. Nowadays, the top professional players, is, so they're, uh, uh, they're part of a group like Roger Federer. He, his thing was just to play tennis. He has a dietitian, he has a nutrition, he has a psychologist, he has a strings racket, everything, contract manager does everything. He just has to play tennis. And the same, take the same case back in our time, when Rod Lever was number one player, he had to do everything on his own. He had to travel and also travel by the economy. Now, Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, they go in private jets. The prize money is huge. So, they, so that makes a lot of difference. But I can say one thing that for us tennis players in our generation, play together, they know, but we are still have very good friends among them. Like I'm very close to some of the top players who play with me, like Charlie Passwell, Tony Roach, you know, you know, we had some sort of bonding together. The present lot, they have the professional players, they play their game and they go their different way. And when they retire, hardly, I mean, they will sort of meet each other. But we, I, I always make it a point to go to Wimbledon every year if I can. The last couple of years has been because of the pandemic, we couldn't go. But just to meet the boys, meet the sports, and have a few beers together, and laugh it off, it's a great fun. So I think coming back to this, that is to get a future champion. champion I don't see the present lot, anyone coming up unless we have a financial assistance from some top people. And a lot of tennis academy has to come up. So you were talking about um, your experience going to Wimbledon on a year-to-year -year basis. So I would just like your take on the current tennis scenario. I mean, who is your favorite player on tour right now and maybe you could tell us about some interactions you've had with some of the players um, because it'll be interesting for us to know from a former player's point of view who you think is the, the best I think the most, most complete player in what I've, I've seen is Roger Federer I mean I, I would compare see in my generation I would say Rod Labour but Federer is a, is a player who, who is one of the few of the players who does everything he serves well volleys well comes to a net Defense is very good. 
very good PR, good personality. He's a really a champion, a true champion. It's, you know, he's demeanor all over. He's very liked everyone. He doesn't lose his temper. He doesn't break rackets. He's, a, he's really a true sportsman, a great guy. I've, I've had the opportunity to meet him with uh, my friend Tony Roach, who was his coach for many years, Australian, famous Australian, uh, legendary Australian. So through, through Tony, I met him a couple of times and uh, he came, came, and came out to me to be a very humble sort of a person, uh, very balanced, very down to earth. And uh, so the woman's side, I'm sorry, I don't know, but I, I met Martina Hingis once when she came to play in Calcutta. She was very nice when she played the Sun Feast Open. The others are the new generation, I'm sorry. I'm too old for that. <laughs> That is that that is interesting. Uh, now, if we move into the um, the second section of our, our chat with you, sir, just a couple of rapid fire questions to um, understand where um, your like what is your favorite Grand Slam of all of the Grand Slams? Which is the venue you love playing at? Most definitely, I think Wimbledon is my favorite Grand Slam. Is it because, Wimbledon is all to do with there's the culture and the allure, the history. The, a lot of it is talked about um, when you go to Wimbledon. Is that something you relate to as well? Yes, culture and tradition. They still have to play in all whites. Still play in grass. It's called lawn tennis. They have never, they have just changed this. The grass is different now. But in our days, the courts were really fast. Now it's not. But it's, a, it's an occasion. It's like uh, for the British uh, summer season. It's Royal Ascot. It is Wimbledon. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, a, it's part of the thing, season. And they kept on the tradition. It was always last week of June. But now they've shifted it back to uh, first week of July. I don't know if they're going to have it this year or not. But it's always I like my favorite Grand Slam. I like to go there. I, I love London and the place. It's a great city. And most definitely, it's one of the best places. All England club is one of the best places to play tennis. Is um, grass your favorite playing surface? Or yeah, I, I, I would say grass because uh, you see, in our days there was no hard courts as such. There was grass and clay. The Forest Hills was grass. Australian Open was grass. Wimbledon was grass, and the clay court was Roland Garros in Paris. So I would say grass and. Uh, I did pretty well in grass. I did at least last 16 of Wimbledon four times. And in Australian Open once and US Open once. And I, in French also, I did pretty well as a clay. I reached last 16 twice. Lost to the eventual winner, Roy Emerson. And uh, just, uh, so I would, I would consider grass as my favorite service. And also I've been brought up on grass. I started my tennis in South Club, Calcutta, which is considered as Wimbledon of the East. Yeah, fantastic post. There. So, so you talk a, about... Oh, sorry. sorry, just uh, as a tennis player, um, for our viewers, just uh, to get your view on the difference between grass and clay, the surfaces in general, and the difference you need uh, by way of playing style, because we see Rafael Nadal is so good on clay, and uh, um, Roger Federer has been fantastic on grass, and Djokovic has been fantastic in the Australian Open, and the different surfaces. So... As a player, your take on the differences you need in your game and why the surface matters so much? You see, first of all, I think most of these players who are top level right now, the European, they all have been brought up in clay, in red, in red clay courts. Yeah, because in clay, is, you, I always emphasize that the clay, you have, to, you, you have to work harder, you have to get stronger physically, you get much stronger, you stay in the court longer. And that gives you a lot of energy to, to you know, it makes you a fitter person to, to, to tackle long matches. Grass court is served in our days, it just courts are very fast. We have to serve and volley all the time. I mean, now, nowadays the grass courts are a little slower than you can see tennis from the back of the courts. But, and hard court is uh, it's a good bouncing ball, you know, you, you just you keep on hitting. The game has changed completely, every decade has changed. You know, you can see everyone. In our days, we had the rackets were different, the equipment was different. Uh, uh, I remember we used to play with wooden rackets, and now you got these uh, synthetic rackets or these uh, aluminium rackets or what makes like an amazing power. You get amazing power. Wooden rackets is a, a much smaller, like a squash racket. 
and there are a lot of injuries, tennis elbow, tennis shoulder. Like I suffered a lot with my right shoulder and elbow for a long time to play with injections. So this is a part of it. Now I, now I notice that very few players get this elbow problem, very rarely, because right. of these knee rackets. Uh, so what we were interested in knowing was you talk about Roger Federer and what a great champion he is, how well he represents the sport of tennis, how he carries himself and everything. We were interested in knowing maybe outside tennis, who is your favorite like sports person outside tennis or maybe your favorite sport outside tennis. Well, I love watching golf. Because I think it's the most difficult game is golf. You know, I love watching golf. Be a professional golf was very really tough. Whenever I have time and television, I love watching golf. I played it a little bit, but I don't play it much now. But uh, it's a very, uh, it looks easy, but it's very tough to play that. I mean, ask any golfer. Hey, once they get, start playing golf, you just get, can't think of anything else. But I love watching golf. And as for my favorite favorite uh, sports person, I think uh, in my days, we played Wimbledon at that time. There were a lot of footballers used to come to tennis and sort of like English, foot, English football as well. So I was quite friend. I mean, I don't know if you heard of this person. I mean, I think not only people might have heard of him. He's a, George Best. He's a great, yeah. he's played Manchester United player. Well, who was one of the best. I mean, he never played for England because he was, he was from Ireland, Northern Ireland. But uh, he was a great player. And I love watching him play also. And he's a great personality. Um, so just uh, as a final um, wrap up, I know uh, you love tennis per se, but if you had to choose between singles and doubles, which is your preferred format? Most definitely singles. Singles is, is so, so, that's all about when you win a Grand Slam, you say singles. Doubles is not, is not a Grand Slam event, but uh, singles is singles. 64 draw. Uh, and I mean, I'm not saying anything. Bad about doubles. Doubles is very tough too. But I reach Wimbledon with doubles, fine quarterfinals also. But the but person is is known. If you're a good singles player, you're known. Like today, so many doubles champions are there in the world now, especially nowadays. But there's only one Nadal and one Federer and one Djokovic. You can't forget them. So most definitely singles. All right. Yeah. yeah. Just to yes. just to conclude, just one last thing. I mean, to any tennis player. Were listening to the podcast, um, you know, if if you could share some final words of encouragement, you know, people playing in India, it's difficult to make it to the top level. So from a former player, it would be, you know, motivational for them. So if you have some final words to share. I think for any sportsman, any aspiring tennis player or any sport, follow your dream, work hard, stay focused, give you 100%. And I'm sure you'll be successful. But then it will be worked really hard. Unfortunately, we don't have the facilities like we have in, in Europe, in the Western countries, right? elsewhere. But still, yes, we have tennis courts all around India. We have tennis coaches also. But you have to be dedicated, work hard. And one thing, remember, talent is only 20%. Hard work, dedication, and focus, 40, 75, 80%. Yeah, we have, India has a lot of talented sportsmen. In tennis, I see a lot of youngsters, 12, 13, great strokes. But by the time they get to 16, 17, they just away maybe the education system is such or the sponsorship is required to travel and pay. they don't have that kind of money so unless you take care of that um, I regret to say we're not going to produce any figures and adults all right thanks a lot it was great hearing for you sir uh, it was great okay. hearing from you. nice talking to think sports and wish you guys all the best huh so guys, with that, we reached the end of our video. Um, we're extremely glad you tuned in. Um, for more content, you should head over to our website. Uh, it's www.thinksports.co.in. It has a lot of sports career related information, podcasts and articles. Um, and you can also follow us on all our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook. Um, also, if you're on YouTube, you know, like, share and subscribe.